You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening and welcome to the Sporting Time Show. I am Doug Thompson. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your Saturday evening with me. I got to tell you, it has been a heat wave. It has been so, so hot. Next week won't be any different. We've had a lot of changes in the schedule, but one change we have not had is my first guest, who is a Toyota of Bowling Green Scholar Athlete, is here in studio. What a resume she has. Braylon Davis out of Metcalf County. Welcome to the show. Thank you. There is so much to unpack. Mm -hmm. uh, in your, your, actually it was your, your nomination uh, information. Uh, you're a three-sport athlete. Yes, basketball, uh, softball, and cross-country. I got to ask you, let's start with cross-country for a second. <laughs> I've interviewed um, hundreds of student athletes that ran cross-country. The first time you tried cross-country, the very first time, did you like it? No, I still don't like it to this day. It's actually, <laughs> it was for basketball conditioning, but you have to have five to run in state and region as a team. So I always thought, well, if I can get my time down enough so that the rest of my team can run in state and stuff, I guess that's what I'll do. So I practiced, but I did not always take it the most serious. I was not very good, but it's okay. It's a, it, is not, uh, it is not an easy sport. No. I mean, it's a lot of conditioning and I've been to too many meets where you know they get to the finish line and it's not a great site I mean it mm -hmm. can be a little bit dicey but you also did softball and, and basketball was there a favorite sport between those two whatever was in season most of the really? time yeah so what what um, and again we'll get into the academic part of it uh, in a minute but what was it about sports that interested you? I mean, were you always athletically inclined when you were growing up? Um, growing up, my parents put me in a lot of different uh, little league programs. Um, I think what really started it all was I started on this 8U team. It was actually out of Russell County, and we started playing travel ball, and we were very successful. We won a couple state tournaments, went to the Little League World Series regionals. Wow. And that's where it started, and then... I got to start varsity basketball in seventh grade, and I'd say from fourth to sixth grade, I was playing middle school ball, and I took it competitive, but I wasn't crazy about it, and then I started varsity in seventh grade, and from that time on, I was in the gym almost every day. I couldn't put the ball down, and then softball season rolled around. I was still practicing basketball, and I was practicing softball during basketball season. I just didn't <laughs> stop. I so, loved it. And, and I have been to Metcalf County uh, a number of times, uh, know the Harbisons, uh, you know, we, we call it Team Harbison and <laughs> Coach Harbison, but, you know, Russell County, Monroe County, Allen County, um, there's something really unique about playing uh, for a smaller high school where you have student athletes that play multiple sports. Uh, you enjoy the experience of, of playing? Yes, the crowd was always nice. Um, even for softball games, we had several people come out. And normally softball games, you don't have as many people. But we always had a great crowd. Basketball-wise, district tournament time was always your favorite because yeah. the crowd was packed. It was always nice. You had so much support throughout the community. And that's why I loved playing at Metcalf County. We've got, we've got about 90 seconds left in this segment. I told you this would go by so quick. We're going to get into the academics here in the next segment, but uh, you were in a thousand point club in basketball. You were in a number of uh, all district, all region, and all of these sports. Um, just kind of talk about what sports did for you uh, academically. What did, how did that help you? I think uh, the main thing throughout sports, a lot of people know I faced several injuries and I learned adversity through. Perseverance through adversity was the main thing that I learned. Um, I got hurt several times and you start to realize there's more to life than sports or there's more to life than academics and you really grow through yourself when you get hurt and have to realize some of those things. And I'm not thankful for those injuries, but those injuries definitely helped me grow as a person. And Yeah, and the, I guess the other benefit is the fact that the relationships that you have created in sports or something that you can carry 
yes, with you. Yes, lifelong friends. Um, I still communicate with several of my friends. I played on several travel ball teams from other counties, and I still communicate with them daily, and so that's nice, always nice. Well, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. More with Braylon Davis. You won't believe this young lady's academic resume. More of the Sporting Times show right here on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back to the show. Braylon Davis is my guest today. She is a three-sport scholar athlete, Toyota of Bowling Green scholar athlete. Uh, unbelievable resume. I got to ask you about some of this stuff. Rogers Explorers recipient. Yes, that was at the end of my eighth grade year, I think it was. Um, I went to the University of Cumberland's. Sadly, it rained most of the time, but you did a lot of different community service. I think I stayed two nights, three days up there, and you just... There were a bunch of prestigious kids up there. And, and you we were all, one of them. Yep. That's amazing. Gov well, everyone knows Governor Scholar. I mean, that is a very elite program. Where did you go for your Governor Scholar? I went to Bellarmine University for five weeks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, and, and you got a lot out of that, didn't you? Yeah, it was life-changing. Um, a lot of my friends, I actually get to go on, I think, June 22nd up to Bellarmine, and I'm so excited to be able to see all of my friends. Um, it's our one-year re reunion, so yeah. a lot of prestigious kids. It's nice to be in a classroom with everybody having a main goal of being successful. You know, what's amazing about you, Braylon, is not only the fact that academically you, you, do, you did all of this, but you also were a three-sport athlete. Yeah. So... How did you balance? I mean, where, where did you find time to, uh, you know, uh, become a governor scholar in, in ACT 31, you know, and you, had, you said you had a 33 was your super score, but where did you find time to, to how do you, how do you balance? Time management skills, you had to really work on that. Um, sometimes it was even maybe studying on the bus on the way to games. Um, on the way home from games, my brother used to play ball, and so uh, I'd be in the bleachers and I'd have my notes out studying in between uh, timeouts and different things. So really, uh, I didn't stay up late too many nights. I don't know, I found time during class while all my friends were talking. Sometimes I had to use that time to study or do yeah. different things, fill out applications. This is, uh, you, were number, you were number one in your class of 22. Congratulations. Thank you. This, this is just amazing. Perfect attendance for 12 years. Yeah. You never missed a day of school. I didn't. I didn't miss a day of school. Um, Did you ever want to miss a day of school? Like, just like, oh, just don't. Actually, uh, my competitive nature came out. My mom didn't miss very much school. I don't think she missed in high school. And my brother didn't miss in high school. So I definitely was not going to miss in high school. I could tell you that. So I didn't miss any throughout the years. That's, I mean, that, that's fantastic. Uh, obviously, the honor rolls, all the uh, academic all-state awards that, that you won uh, in, in the sports that you did. Uh, now, uh, you originally were going to go to WKU. You're going you're gonna to become a physical therapist. You want to get your doctorate and mm -hmm. open your own practice. Uh, but you've changed a little bit. Yeah. You're headed to? I'm headed to Lindsey Wilson College. So. And, I'm excited. And you get to, because of the presidents, you, you get a couple of big scholarships. Yeah, I'm a Begley Scholar and a Bonner Scholar there. And so I get to go on a few different trips and different things. You get to go to the major, you get to go to Chicago, New York, San Francisco. And New York, Chicago, San Francisco, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yep. Um, do you like, uh, do you like to eat? They yes. They great food. I love to eat. So. Yeah, New Orleans, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Make time to eat. All right. So. You, you're going to head to Lindsey Wilson. You've got such a bright future. Um, you're going to become a, a physical therapist, like I said, open your own practice. Do you want to open it in Metcalf County or somewhere else? Yeah, I would like to come back to Edmonton and open my own practice. Um, 
actually being injured so many different times, that's really where I learned that I love physical therapy, going to different physical therapy clinics, and always noticed it was so hard. You'd either have to transfer to, due to insurance or just different things. So I really want to open my own practice and make that a whole lot easier and provide necessary medical help to people in my community. Well, you are going to be a great force. Uh, you have been and you will be in the future. You think we know everything about you. We've got about 45 seconds. It's going to be this or that. Here's a check for 500 from Toyota well, Bowling Green. thank you. But I want to get you this or that. It's a question. you okay. got to tell me what you like prefer. All right? Quick, mountains or beach? Beach. Pizza or hamburger? Pizza. Movies, drama, action, or comedy? Movies. Movies? Okay. <laughs> Android or iPhone? iPhone. Diet Coke or Coke? Coke. Would you like to be in the city or country? Country. Rock? pop or country music? Country music. Red, blue, or pink? Blue. All right. Well, listen, you, you, we know a little bit more about you. Congratulations on everything, and good luck in the future. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more of the Sporting Times right here on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back to the show. Well, my next guest has an amazing resume. The last two seasons, her record is 73 and 5. They just finished up at the state softball tournament, a semifinal finish. I want to welcome into the show Kelly Reynolds, the head coach of the South Warren Lady Spartans. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 73 and 5. Uh, I didn't have to use my phone calculator to figure out how many losses you've had in the last two seasons. Your overall record since five seasons, we got to scratch out 2020, mm -hmm. 159 and 30. Wow. <laughs> That's an average of six losses per season. I know you don't keep up with this stuff. I love to look at numbers and just an amazing uh, five years that you've had. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know how you do it. I don't know how... You, you come down off of a fourth region championship game like you had, and then the game at State against Henderson. Do you do your nerves? How do you ever come down from something like that? And let's start with the fourth region championship game where you were getting no breaks in that game. Correct. Um, that was an intense game. Um, you know, we were, we were down. And we just kept telling the girls, you know, you, you've got time. Games are seven innings for a reason. But when it got to about that, you know, fifth, sixth inning, we were like, okay, <laughs> we are running out of time. You yeah. know, we've got to get on the road here. And so, um, and they did. And going back to that Henderson County game at the state tournament, wow. Yeah. I mean, that was that was a game. And we had said in the sixth inning, we had said if we could scratch two runs here, we might have a chance. And um, we were able to get three runs. And then going into the bottom of the seventh and down by one, and at that point, you know, two outs, Ellie Bennett's up, has a 2-2 two -two count. I mean, it was – we had runners at first and second. And she hit the ball. And I, I, I don't even know. It took me a while to process. Yeah what even happened and I was just sending the runners I was like let's go let's go let's go and I brought Ellie into third and you know as soon as she slid into third and you know we had won the ball game at that point it was just surreal but for a senior to get that kind of hit and that kind of right I mean <laughs> she and we've seen the celebrations when they get a big hit and things change in a game but she'll remember that for the rest of her life. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, what a great moment for her. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to be able to have that impact at that level of competition yeah. and, I mean, right when you needed it the most. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. Of course, you go on to win, you're in the semifinals, and, you know, Ballard just got you that day. They did. But with that being said, uh, such a bright future with mm -hmm. your pitching staff, with some young hitters. Uh, 
are you able to maybe disconnect for a few weeks before you start thinking about we're going to have a really good team next year or are you already thinking about it? Well, it's funny. On the way back from Lexington on that Sunday, we were on the charter bus and we were coming back and we were trying not to talk about next year, you know, just kind of have some time and enjoy what we had just experienced. And But automatically we had our paper out. We were writing down things and um, we got back after that week and we had our youth camp that last week as well. Then yeah. we hosted the East West All-Stars this past weekend. and. Um, Coach Smith and I, who's one of the assistant coaches, we had met last night planning things for next year. And so it's like you try to take a break, but it's right. just hard. You know, it's exciting. You look forward what's to come. It is exciting. I mean, it's you have two ace pitchers, and we got about a minute left. You know, Norwood's coming back 12 and 1 this season. Layla is coming back, a great pitcher as mm -hmm. well. Uh, you've got this uh, trophy here that is. Uh, something that I'm sure the girls are very, very proud of, and they've got to be looking forward to getting back to next season. I think they do. They're both playing travel ball right now. A lot of our girls are already playing travel ball yeah. and doing great um, in their travel ball, on their travel ball teams. And, you know, I just think there's just a lot of promise for next year. We have um, even a senior picture, a pitcher that will come into play a lot next year, Kendall Willingham. Yeah. She'll get some more innings next year, no doubt. And We'll just keep plugging along and see what we can produce. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be very good. Don't go anywhere when we come back. I've got some questions for Coach Reynolds that I didn't know before a couple of weeks ago. So stay tuned. More of the Sporty Time Show right here on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back. Kelly Reynolds is my guest today. Thank you very much for coming in. I know you have so much going on with summer ball and everything else that you're doing. So thank you very much for coming in. And, uh, you know, I know I've told you this before, but back years and years ago when the Sporting Times had a, a trifold paper, you were, uh, I believe, the, the head coach of Warren Central. I was. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And you were, you were on the cover of uh, the magazine or the paper that we did at that time. Uh, so you've been coaching for a, a little while. Yes, several years, um, several years. So I had, I was at Central previously. That was my first head coaching experience. And then I got out of coaching a little bit when I had my second child. I thought it's time to be a mom, time to be <laughs> home. And um, when my daughter started playing, she's my oldest. And then once she started playing, then I got back into the travel ball scene yep. and did that for a while. And then um, I've been at South Warren. She's... She started playing there her sixth grade year, and then I started co coaching her there her eighth grade year. And, you know, we had two weeks ago, we had a doctor on the show, Dr. Rachel Riley. Uh huh. And she told me <laughs> on air that you and your dad introduced her to pitching. That's correct. Um, uh, who knew? Yeah. I mean, that is a great <laughs> trivia question. Uh huh. And isn't that. That, so, so that's what I wanted to ask yes. you about. You never told us that. No, I didn't. So uh, Rachel Riley was actually one of the very first girls that I taught pitching lessons to. It was her and Brittany York, actually. Wow. Pretty good and, duo. Um, it was. And we used to meet on Sundays over at Warren Central in the gym. And um, I'd work with them on pitching lessons every Sunday. And, you know, it was just kind of one of those things I was able to give back to the right. youth at that time and do lessons. And I did that for several years. And once I got a real job of teaching, <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't have as much time anymore. And But yeah, I sure did. Well, she said she was really young. She um, was. And, you know, had you known she was going to go to Greenwood, would you have been so good in your coaching? <laughs> But I don't know. Probably. I mean, Probably. you know, we'll see. <laughs> but she, she just sang you all sorts of praises, and oh. it's got to make you feel really good to know that, you know, you had students like Rachel Riley, who went on to the University of Kentucky, had an mm -hmm. unbelievable career. Brittany York, mm -hmm. uh, who ended up at University of Louisville. Uh, I think she went from pitching, though, to first base. She did. But she, mm -hmm. you know, she was 
an incredible pitcher mm -hmm. in high school. And then all the kids that you've been in contact with since then that you've had the opportunity to mentor and, and, and teach because it's so important to understand, I would imagine, the technique of, of being a good pitcher. Yeah, and it takes a lot of work. Yeah. And I mean, it, it starts at an early age. I mean, when I started, when I started pitching, I was 10. And wow. fast pitch wasn't as, as dominating as it is now. Right. And so for four years of high school, my dad and mom drove me to Nashville once a week during high school. And I went to Club K for pitching lessons, which was Sherry Kemp. And she now is an ESPN commentator. Wow, and um, really? still in, in, in women's fast pitch and um, took lessons from her. And so then when I, you know, finished with college and or I was actually still in college, then I wanted to be able to give back. And that was actually my first experience was doing pitching lessons. And then I thought, you know, I kind of like this. Maybe yeah. I can coach, you know, maybe <laughs> I can kind of put all this in together. And and it's and here we go. Here That's I am amazing. today. So were you doing soft? Were you doing slow pitch while going to Nashville to do, learn fast pitch? So my fr starting my freshman through my junior year of high school, it was still slow pitch. So yeah. I decided to finally play slow pitch my junior year. So I did not play at Warren Central my freshman and sophomore year. Finally, my junior year, I decided to play. And then my senior year is when it went fast pitch. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only here on the Sporting Times show will you learn information like this. <laughs> I never knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you did you play in college? Or? I did. I played at Middle Tennessee State okay. and right. I went there my freshman year. I had to have shoulder surgery. Mm. So when I came back home, Western's program had not started yet. So um, that's when I really got into um, even coaching some travel ball that summer. Um, I even I coached uh, Kathy Church's team that wow. year when she played at Greenwood. Um, Lindsay, oh, good Lindsay Green, oh, who Lindsay was at Greenwood. Green. Yeah. Yes. Um, so several of those girls um, I coached that year myself, and it was Jamie Carter, which was Jamie Coomer at the time, and she used to coach at Central. She was That's a head amazing. coach at Central for a little bit, and then went to Warney's for a little bit. So. Coach, uh, it's so. F fun to talk with you, but we run out of time all the mm -hmm. time, but thank you very much. <laughs> Have a great summer. Thank you. I, I will see it. you back here for sure. Yes. Everybody, thank you for tuning in for the Sporting Time Show. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a fantastic week. Good night.